What's going on here? What was going on here is that Cleveland was unaware of of the questionable health of Isaiah Thomas, at least from their vantage point, from Boston's vantage point. They told you everything that they knew and that they thought you needed to know about Isaiah Thomas and his questionable health, which is why they were willing to surrender the unprotected first round pick that Cleveland got in this trade. Cleveland's position is that they still thought that uh, Isaiah Thomas would probably be ready to go in all likelihood. And then upon examination, there have been some questions that have propped up. So they're leaning on the fact that they didn't know such and such. And as a result, Result, they are worthy of more compensation from the Boston Celtics. And if the Boston Celtics are not willing to give it to them, we can veto this deal. What they're banking on is that Boston will acquiesce and capitulate because the last thing Boston wants to do at this particular moment in time is bring Isaiah Thomas back into the fold, not just because of his questionable health right now, but because they know he's excessively salty about being traded to begin with. He gave his blood, sweat, and tears uh, to the organization as far as he's concerned. Uh, he's told other people, including Isaiah Thomas, uh, that he's incredibly hurt that they, he was traded from the Boston Celtics. So if you're Danny Ainge in the Boston Celtics, you don't want him back at this particular juncture because that's going to be a lot to overcome. Cleveland is banking on that. That way they'll be able to peel some kind of first-round pick uh, or another player or both from Boston. That means a mark is smart plus the first round pick. Now Boston has its own, plus it's had the Lakers protected pick in 2018, plus the Clippers uh, and the Memphis Grizzlies pick in 2019, plus the slew of second round picks available uh, to their disposal. So their mentality, so Cleveland's mentality is that let's get something out of this equation. Let's get another player. Boston's not going to give up Jason Tatum, the number three overall pick in the draft. They're not out of Duke. They're not going to give him up. But Cleveland's mentality is maybe we could get smart Marcus Smart in one of those picks or another player in one of those picks. Or if all else fails, at least another first-round pick. That's why they're making so much noise about it, because they're in pursuit of more compensation. And we'll see what happens. But I think ultimately they'll end up getting something, but the deal's not going to fall apart because Boston doesn't want this vetoed. And in retrospect, probably Cleveland doesn't either. This was Cleveland's opening offer. Give us all this stuff. Boston's not going to do it. Let me tell you what I would tell Cleveland if I was Danny Ainge, Stephen A., I would tell him the same thing that Michael Corleone told the senator from Nevada when that senator tried to shake him down. He said, you can have my offer now, senator, if you want it. My offer is nothing, not even the 20000 for the licensing fee, which I would appreciate if you put up personally. That's what I would say if I was Danny Ainge, because I don't trust Dan Gilbert, and based on his you know, past behavior, the whining letters and terrible things he wrote about LeBron and the way he tried to undo the Chris Paul trade to the Lakers. Always a big crybaby that way. I don't trust the Cavs here. This is what I think the Cavs. Just reading the tea leaves. I've no, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't talk to anyone about this. This is my reading, of, of, of reading between the lines. The Cavs knew the risk associated with this deal. They knew Isaiah Thomas was coming off an injury. Stop that. What they thought they would do is be slick and get everyone so pregnant with the idea and then actually with the trade that at the 11th hour they could turn around and say, oh, look at this, we had no idea. Give us more, thinking the Boston wouldn't want to undo it. In fact, if you look at it carefully, it is Boston that has the leverage, not Cleveland. Cleveland doesn't have a lot of leverage here. The, the deal they got from Boston was by far the best deal they were offered, by far for Kyrie Irving. That's why everyone was amazed at the job that Cleveland did. Wow. You had a distressed asset. Everyone knows he wants to leave. He doesn't want to be there. That means you're going to get less for him than he's worth. You've already turned down trades for him that you're likely going to get a worse deal now. Oh, wow. You got an even better deal now. Well, if something is too good to be true, it usually is. One of the reasons you got so much for Kyrie in that deal is Isaiah potentially is compromised early in the season. So, okay, now you're going to play dumb and ask for more, hoping to get what? As you said, Stephen A., like a late first-round pick out of this maybe? If I were Danny Ainge, I would play hardball right now and say, matter of fact, because you maybe we want some more in this deal. Maybe we didn't get such a great deal. And then maybe oh, you want to go through with the deal or not. Cleveland has more to lose in this than Boston. Crowder is an excellent player. I said, look, Kyrie's the best player in the deal, I think, ultimately, Boston wins that trade because he is the best player in the deal. But the point is, Cleveland's going to get less for Kyrie than they got from any other team than they got for Boston. So Boston actually is the team, in my opinion, with leverage here. And it's not like Isaiah can't also be traded to another team 
for something good. They gave up the Nets pick. That could be the number one overall pick in the draft. They gave up Isaiah, who let's say he is compromised even in the first half of the season eventually is going to be in a walk year where he wants to get paid and has all the motivation in the world in the second half of the season and in the playoffs to make that up. You think Isaiah Thomas isn't motivated enough normally? Oh, get out of that man's way in the second half and in the playoffs are coming up right now. You get Crowder too? I mean, go. if I were Danny Ainge, I'd say, go ahead. I'm calling your bluff. Deal's off. Suckers, what you got to say now? And guess what Cleveland will do? They will blink.